So now it's time for the third video addressing the provisioning team. And the main task here is to deliver the services as quick as possible to the customers. And in order to automate this group of people who uses orchestration software to provision the services. Challenges that we need to address here is, of course, the primary thing, lack of automation. We need full automation to have instant provisioning. And when things are done semi-automatically, or manual, or even in some circumstances automated, there can be quality issues in the service delivery, meaning non-correct configurations, non-optimal configurations, or bad error recovery if something goes wrong during the provisioning, the network gets left in the stale state. So we need to make sure that the service is delivered 100% correct. One thing that can be kind of a catch-22 thing if you automate things is that once it's automated, once the service is provisioned through network, it can be hard to modify running services in the network. You might be caught in a typical create and delete scenario. Imagine you provision a VPN and a customer would like to change to the bandwidth on one branch office, modify the cost settings, etc. It's very important that these kind of fine grain flexible changes are supported on the running services and don't require you to go back to delete and recreate it for new because that will hit your customers, that will create downtime, and it will not provide the flexible services that customers expect today. From a technical perspective, Historically, we've had a tight coupling between the automation systems and other systems up in the OSS stack layer and the network's automation piece, meaning that details in the equipment and how the configurations are done on the devices when you introduce a new vendor in the network that normally ripples all the way up to the OSS stack and sometimes vice versa. When you need to do a change in providing a new product offering that in some cases ripple all the way down to the automation software, that creates a very tight coupling which makes things very inflexible. As a network automation engineer, you can't do quick new offerings from the network layer, and the OSS guys can't introduce new offerings to the customer layer. So it's important to decouple network services from the services that are sold to the customers, so this can be very light combined in creative ways. So how can NSO help here? Well, the most important thing is that northbound NSO provides an API to provision the services, to modify the services, and to delete them. So there's a service layer API to the north systems and users. The services can be compulsive virtual network functions or applications built from classical network services. What's very important here is that NSO manages two different life cycles, and this is sometimes confused when we're talking about virtualization. South NSO can treat the VNFs or the virtual machines, if you speak IT lingo, at the coarse-grained life cycle, meaning starting VMs, stitching them together. That's the coarse-grained life cycle. But once the VNFs are up and running, they need to be fine-grained configured in order to provide an end-to-end -end service. So NSO does complete life cycle management of your services, both the coarse-grained and the fine-grained changes. As stated before, it's extremely important that you can modify on running services instances. There is some automation software out there that only allows for create and delete. That gives you very inflexible automation software. When you provision services, we talked about challenges being the services are not really provisioned correctly. NSO is very careful when provisioning the services and is supplying transactions to the changes in the network. So whatever you request from the northbound system to create and modify delete the service, that is normally a lot of southbound actions in starting VMs, configuring VMs, talking to physical devices, reconfiguring them, etc. So a lot of southbound commands and configuration changes. NSO has a built-in transactional engine, so as a northbound user or system, you can trust that either the complete service happens or nothing. It never stays in between. So that gives you fail-safe operations. It's automated error recovery. You don't have to do manual fallouts to fix intermediate states. That also makes sure that the config data store in NSO is always up to date since transactional rules are applied to network changes, meaning CDB has a perfect image of the config out there. 
This is transactions from sort of a configuration change perspective. There's another side of the coin here that even though the configuration changes are okay, the service might not work. So with the option of orchestrated assurance to NSO, NSO will also at the end apply an activation test, meaning testing the service end-to-end -end across the network, including sections of the network that NSO hasn't really touched to make sure that it works, and then we can bring customers to use the service. So I've talked about sort of the create and delete look-in, so I will dive a little bit into that because it's very important to understand what that means. Any automation software can, of course, automate the initial create, a very important thing of NSO with the transaction site. Some systems don't. But once the service is provisioned in the network, from a self-service portal or through the provisioning team or through the auto management system, you can modify the running service. This is very important so that you can provide flexible services to your customers. So on the fly, you can change any settings. What I'm showing here, like changing cost settings on the running VPN, or adding a VNF within a service chain. You don't have to tear down and reinstantiate the service chain. You can add a VNF in the service chain on the fly. So those kind of runtime service modifications are flexibly supported by NSO. When you do all of that, it's very important that you can observe what's going on. So NSO provides an observability of the running service instances. Before applying a fine grain change, you can do dry run to see that if I change this cost setting, these are the changes that will be applied before committing to it. For changes that take a long time, for example, starting a virtual machine, NSO has a notion of a plan, meaning you can observe long-running sequences as part of a transaction to see how far have I come, how long has the service changes reached. Before moving over to the actual demo, there's one last thing I'd like to talk about. It's a very important architectural thing that you can decouple the network services from the OSS. There is sometimes a habit of having silos from the OSS all the way down to the network devices, and that gives a very inflexible environment change to introduce new services quick. So with the NSO in place, you can have NSO be owned by the network engineers, those that know about the network services, how they should be implemented in the network, and NSO provides a network service API to the northbound OSS systems. So this can be invariant over a long time. The Yang service model defines the contract here, so the OSS team can only call upon NSO operations to create, modify, and delete the service instances. Remember, there is a modify as well. Remember that all operations are transaction safe, so that simplifies greatly all the changes and further developments of the OSS system because you have an independent API towards the network services. At the same time, the networking team can be very creative and invent new services and provide that over the API without having to have that tightly coupled to the OSS teams. This separates these two life cycles. You can be very quick and further develop the portfolios in these two different layers. So I will do a first step in demonstrating NSO for provisioning services here. So I will provision a layer three business VPN between branch offices, some multi-vendor network here. And what you see now is a web UI that is developed custom for this specific service. So in real life, there would be a service portal or an order management system or something else driving this fully automated towards NSO. In some circumstances, you would use the NSO APIs, tools, or CLIs to do this. So that depends on how far you're going in your automation. I'm just using this to illustrate NSO to provide provisioning functions. So there's Yang service model that is defined. What are the input parameters when you provision a VPN? So we can add a VPN here for customer Volvo, their AS number. And we can leave cost policy out for now and change that later on. We'll leave the option of orchestrated assurance out for now, but those are the two top level parameters. So now let's add two branch offices here. So we can take CE4 here, add that, call that branch office one, specify the IP network. Add yet another guy from there. 
branch office 2. So this was the input parameters. So I just defined the global parameters for the VPN and the configuration parameters for the endpoints. So this is the intent sent from a northbound system into NSO. What NSO does now is, based on these input parameters, calculate the desired changes that are needed in the network to provide this business VPN. And we can dry run that one. So commit dry run will look at the input parameters, calculate the changes. Here we see for CE3, this is what I will add. So anything in green is new stuff. So all of this will be added to CE3 and all the other devices as well. You can as well inspect in the native format. So usually when you introduce automation software, you're always a bit suspicious. Does this really work? What will it do to my network? It's important to create trust. So NSO provides a way to dry run the whole thing and see not only in the generic format we just did show, but also what are the native CLI commands. So this goes further down, showing all the details. So here you see the Cisco IOS CLI commands to CE3 and to CE4, etc. So if I'm committing that now, this would be a transaction safe operation. So either the whole thing goes through or nothing because it changed CE4 and PE2, CE3 and PE1. So the transaction touched four devices. If any one of these would fail, NSO would automatically roll back all of those changes. So it's an all or nothing operation, which makes life much easier for operators and for northbound systems. So we just did see a create case. Let's look at the modify. So imagine that the customer calls in or uses a self-service portal, pays a bit more, and would like to apply quality of service to the business VPN. So on this running instance, we can pick bronze here. NSO would calculate the minimum diff. So in order to apply the bronze cost policy, what would I need to do? And now this is the diff to make that costs happen in the network. And we can commit that thing. So this is the minimum change on the running service, which will apply costs. You don't have to delete and recreate. NSO also helps you understand this service configuration once the service is deployed. So let's start it out a bit. We have the service Volvo. You can do a first coarse grained investigation and see what are the modified devices. These four are touched by this service, or you can do it more fine grained one. So, in what way did you touch those devices? You can ask NSO, show me the modifications that you made once the service was provisioned. So, we can select different output formats. And here I'm asking NSO to show that in the NSO CLI format. The same thing can of course be done over the NSO CLI. So let's first see what's the configuration of the VPNs that we have. So here we see the input parameters. This is an exact config of the service itself from a northbound perspective, but you can also ask NSO, so what did you do to my network when this was provisioned? So what are the modifications that happened in the network? So here you see all the changes that happened per device. As shown in the operations video, you can also use NSO to troubleshoot services. I will show a little bit of it here as well. So a common problem when services are not working as expected is that config changes have happened out of band. Someone did a config change on a device directly in the network without really knowing there was a service out there. So imagine, we start to get trouble tickets and performance reports around this service not behaving correctly. The first thing you can trigger from a northbound system automatically, so like, is this service in sync with what's out there in the network? So you can do a deep check sync, meaning with this service intent, is the network configured accordingly? Then we can first do a very quick Boolean check. Are we in sync or not? 
And we see here, no, we're not. There is an issue here, okay. Let's dig into this one. In what way are we out of sync? So show me the diff in CLI. Here we can see, hmm, something has changed on the device. So we see their access list modified. Policy maps modified. So this is probably why the service does not work at all. There's a quick way of escaping out of this. So, because we had a service intent that was given to NSO, someone has changed config on the devices out there. Just redeploy the service, and what NSO will do here is not tear down and recreate. If we calculate the minimum diff and carefully do the minimum diff changes so that the service is restored back to its normal state. Now the service is redeployed, everything is back, and the service is in sync. The service should work as expected. We can now move over to see how NSO can deploy virtual network functions as well. So going back to the architecture diagram, we can see that NSO will receive an input request to instantiate the service that might include virtual functions. If so, NSO has a southbound module called Elastic Services Controller, which accesses the VNF manager in Etsy terminology. It deals with VNF life cycles, talking to OpenStack or VMware typically to start the VNFs and scale them and heal them and stop them, of course. So a service request goes both to the VNF manager to start the VNFs. Once they're started, it goes through the NEDs to configure them and also through NEDs to the existing physical because in most cases, it's always sort of a hybrid. Let's build this a little bit bottom up. So in the Etsy terminology, we have VNF descriptors, which are templates to boot virtual network functions. So NSO, can onboard descriptors. These descriptors are templates to boot a specific function. So we have a virtual firewall, we have a virtual CSR, we have a virtual test agent, for example. After these, then you can build network service descriptors, which are templates for a complete service chain. So we can see a couple of examples here. Off to the right, you have the VNFs available to build your service chain, and you can have individual templates like this one that is called advanced. We have a virtual firewall and a virtual CSR. Another one has a virtual CSR and a virtual test agent to send active test traffic in the service chain to validate if it works. Those were two examples. Let's move back to provisioning scenario. And here we have a physical CPE that is shipped to the branch office. When we would like to connect that to the VPN and we would spin up a service chain in the data center and picking one of the available NSDs we have. So, let's start by doing the VPN. And, So let's add this branch office to the VPN. Branch office six. And when I pick NSD here, so what are the virtual functions I would like to start in the data center? So when the CPE connects to the VPN, what are the virtual functions I would like to spin up? Then you can pick from the available ones you had defined in the library. Let's take the one that we call Basic Assurance, which will start a virtual PE and a virtual test agent. And you can assign the test agent SLA as well to tie this orchestrated assurance later. So when I commit this now, NSO will instantiate the network service, which will start the VNFs in the data center. So, let's see if they are ready. A yellow one. So it will soon start. It goes green, which means it's booted. We have virtual PE. We have the virtual test agent up and running. 
And then finally, NSO also stitches the network together. So at this point, we have a service chain up and running here. When NSO deploys virtual network functions and other things that might take a long time, the fundamental characteristics of NSO makes it stand apart from most of the rest of the industry because when we deal with network functions that are distributed across data centers, it's very hard to sort of beforehand define predefined sequence in which order things might happen. An orchestrator dealing with virtual network functions need to be event-driven rather than workflow-driven. So for all the virtual network functions, NSO deploys them, and it then waits to see which events appear, and based on the events that come, NSO progresses. And we call that the state convergence algorithm built into NSO, which makes it into an event-driven NFVO and not a workflow-driven NFVO. We can inspect that in various ways. So here we have a log of the events that have happened and the next step that NSO took. So the ordering event can be any order. This is just this sequence that happened. If we do the same thing, the sequence might be totally different and NSO is perfectly robust in treating events and progressing the things further. In the presentations we have done previously, we talked about the plan. So the plan is a way to view a virtual network function a service as an individual state machine. Events arrive and the thing progresses and you can drill down into the individual plan if you so like. Let's see if I check the Volvo here. Every service has a plan and every plan is a state machine with corresponding events. And we can see that the VPN has a branch office component, which is the branch office we deployed. And we can see the individual states and when they were reached. So as an operations guy, you can see this might take minutes, hours, days, if it's physical things being shipped, for example. And you can see the state machine progressing here. And now look for the final part here. We have so far gone through the features of NSO dealing with service provisioning virtual, physical, and investigating services, a bit of orchestrated assurance, and I've performed all this from CLI or from the user interface. Of course, at the end, the important thing is to automate the whole stack. So north of NSO would sit maybe a self-service portal or an order management system or other OSS systems. And all the things that I've shown you on this video can be driven on any of the northbound APIs. There are various APIs. What I will illustrate is a couple of REST calls to do what I have done so far. The important thing here is that the payload of this API is defined by the service model. So the Yang service model that defines the layer three VPN services we have seen, also the Yang model is defined as descriptors to VFDs and NSDs, so there's a contract from NSO to OSS developers. These are the valid URLs, these are the valid payloads, this is the schema. So there is a well-defined API that is stable over time, which the OSS team can use to automate the network services. And I will illustrate a little bit of that right now. So I'm going to do a couple of REST call north of NSO to illustrate a northbound REST API where the payload is defined by the Yang data model. So we can start by inspecting the VPN. So here I'm requesting the VPNs from the northbound NSO system here. And we can see that we have a VPN. This is sort of a shallow get. I'll later on show how you can get deep. And at the top root of VPN, we also have the global cost definitions. Let's go into one of the VPNs. So here I give this URL instead, l3vpn slash Volvo. And here we see a definition of Volvo. We can do that deep to get all the things. So if we go up here and see your question mark deep, gives me the complete definition of the VPN over a REST call. You might prefer JSON encoding instead. So here I'm stating I would like JSON encoding. So here you have the same thing, JSON encoded. 
So those were a couple of read requests. Let's do other operations. We can start by saving our current VPN into a local XML file. So I'm reading the Volvo VPN. I'm reading deep all the definitions, saving that to local file here. So I have the config of the VPN stored locally. What I can do then is that I can delete a VPN with a rest call. So I'm going to, so I'm doing the delete of Volvo VPN. Now that VPN is deleted, let's move over here and we can see that VPN is gone. The VPN was deleted from the northbound interface. And so the VPN that I just deleted, of course, I can create the VPN as well. Remember, I did save the XML payload for that VPN. I can post that to this URL, and now the VPN will be recreated. Now let's check the UI here, and suddenly we have the Volvo VPN as expected here with the original definition.